Welcome to Calvary Online, and we want to thank you for joining us for our Easter service. Our hope is to get to know you better, and one of the ways we'd like to do that is through our digital Connect card. So if you can go online and fill out the Connect card, it's located at cbcmodesto.org forward slash connect. And we thank you for doing that and just giving us a little bit of information, because our hope is one day to see you face to face. But we want to thank you for being here. We appreciate any comments, any feedback on Facebook, on YouTube, and we hope that you're blessed by our Easter service. Thank you. In your presence 
We're going to continue our worship by giving of our tithes and offerings. And there are many different ways that you can give. And you can find descriptions of those online on our website at cbcmodesto.org forward slash give. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to worship today. And may we give our tithes and offerings with gladness and joy. And Lord, that you would just bless them. And I pray, Lord, that your majesty would be the, the light that leads us. And that your risen son, the compassion that he has, would be the love that guides us. And Lord, that the Holy Spirit will be the power that, that empowers us here. And I pray that in all your holy and precious name, Jesus, I pray. Amen.
This is so upside down. The church on Easter is supposed to be full, not empty. I mean, this is where I expect to see Joe and Barbara sitting. Or Terry and Cheryl. I know Mary and Terry sit over there. It's Quasian the boys sit over there. This is where it's supposed to be. This isn't how it's supposed to be on Easter. And see, right now we're trying to make sense of things. Things are just so upside down. And we're trying to turn things right side up. Which is absolutely why it makes no sense to us. Why would Jesus choose to turn things upside down? But that's exactly what he did. And see, the first Easter is when Jesus showed the upside down to the world. And in Philippians chapter 2, Paul's going to help us to understand why Jesus did it. So if you have your Bible app or your Bible, let's take a look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to begin reading in verse 5. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are a good and faithful God. I thank you that in a time when things are upside down, you can turn things right side up. And Lord, I pray that as we come to this Easter morning, you would help us to understand why you would choose what looks to us to be an upside down way. And I pray that in this time when things absolutely feel upside down to us, you would help us to see that there is hope there is joy that can still be found because of Jesus, what you did on Easter so long ago. So Father, I just ask by your Holy Spirit, wherever we are, sitting on our couches, listening in our cars, wherever we may be, that you would use these words, that they would come from you. You would speak to us and encourage our hearts and draw us closer to you, Jesus. And we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have been in a series in Philippians 2, and this series is called Community. And Easter, I think it's very appropriate that we would talk about community, that community would be where we are, because it's something I believe we're all craving. It's something we're all desiring, we're all wanting right now, especially I think as we feel isolated from one another. And so in the book of Philippians, Paul was writing to a specific community, to the community of the church at Philippi. But what's interesting as Paul is writing to them, he has a similar view to us because he's looking back. He's looking back at what Jesus did. And that's what Easter is like for us. We're looking back. We see all that happened. And one of the benefits I'd have to say of hindsight is as a lot of us know, hindsight's 2020. So we get that opportunity to see a complete picture. But even as we look back, we don't know what's ahead. We can't look forward. And we're in a time right now that we absolutely don't understand. Why is this going on? Why is this happening? I mean, a lot of ways you look at economics, you look at the economy and jobs and different things. Things were looking good. 
A lot of people were working. Looking at the housing market, it seemed like things were getting better there. And things are just kind of moving along. And then all of a sudden, everything comes to a halt. But see, what Paul is going to help us understand from Philippians 2 is we look at this on this Easter morning, that in the midst of upside down, there's still hope. There's absolutely still hope. And so I want to give you a couple of things. If you're a note taker, grab some paper, or you can download the notes off of our website. I want to give you a couple of things as we consider this on Easter morning, how we handle the upside down. The first thing is this. The first thing we have to do is we need to check our thinking. You've got to check your thinking. See, the way we look at things is absolutely important. And Paul already talked about this in the beginning of chapter 2 in verse 2. And he uses a phrase to describe the church in the way they ought to be thinking. And what he says and he tells the church is to be like-minded. Be like-minded. The way you're thinking is important. And Paul gives us an example of this in Jesus. And that's what we read. And let's take a look again at verse 5. He says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. You must have the same attitude. And see, a lot of times I think for us, when we think about attitude, what we're thinking of is the way I feel. You know, you might tell someone, you know, your attitude stinks. You need a positive attitude. And so we think of that more as a feeling. But really, when you look at the word attitude, it's not about a feeling. It's defined as a particular way to think. And so in this description, Paul's telling us, check your thinking. You need to check your thinking. Because it's easy to get lost, especially right now in the upside down thinking everything stinks there's no hope in this and so what does Paul do is he says check your thinking but he tells us who to think like and his example is Jesus Jesus is his example but see this is exactly where things seem upside down to us because the way Jesus thinks in verses 6 through 8 don't make any sense and let's look at it again in verse 6 Paul wrote, though he was God, so he's talking about Jesus here, he did not think of the quality of God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So Paul's telling us, check our thinking, think like Jesus, but Jesus did what? Okay, wait a minute, Let, let's kind of walk back through this, all right. Part of what this verse is telling us is the fact that Jesus is God. Jesus is in heaven, and we use a phrase called the Trinity, which I'm not going to unpack that right now, but basically it's three in one. You've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They have distinctions in their person, but yet they are one. And honestly, the egg is the best example I can give. It's kind of weak, but I still think it's the best is you have the yolk, you have the shell, and then you have the white. Three parts that have distinctions, but they make one egg. And so the fact is, Paul's alluding to this. Jesus is God. Jesus has a right to claim everything, but this is Jesus' thing, and he turns that upside down and gives it all up. And his response is choosing humility. And that just doesn't make sense to us. Jesus is willingly choosing upside down, and we want out of it. See, we live in a world where you've got to look out for number one. See, nobody else is going to. You need to take care of you and yours. That's what needs to happen. And so we've seen this at its kind of utmost and it's probably selfish end, which I think would bother most of us in the way people are acting right now. We see people hoarding supplies. We see people gouging other people with the prices of things. We absolutely see people looking out for number one. And while most of us are going to look at that and say, well, that's terrible, 
See, I think part of it happens every day in life. See, we go to work and we do things and we'll still put ourselves above others, do everything to get where we want to be. And Jesus goes the opposite way. Instead of taking advantage of others, he puts others first. Jesus is willing to give up his divine position in heaven and come to earth. He's born as a baby, taking on human flesh. John 1 talks about this in verse 14, that Jesus became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus walks this earth, lives, laughs, cries, plays, hurts, grieves, mourns, and dies. And so we look at that and we go, see what I got, Jesus? I mean, verse 8 tells us at the end, he died on a cross. So Paul, you're telling me to check my thinking, which is not a bad idea, but yet then you're telling me to think like Jesus. Jesus thinking got him killed. Why in the world would I want that? Well, see, this is where God takes the upside down makes it the greatest story ever. And this is what Easter is all about. See, in Mark 16, we find what happened that Easter morning. And I want to read starting in verse 1. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, Easter, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. Each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. See, so we go from Jesus being willing to give up divine position in everything, and it gets him killed. But that's not the end of the story, because for us, that would be the end of the story. We're not coming back from the dead. Jesus does. He is risen. And so to realize that when we think like Jesus, there's more to this. But not only does he rise from the dead, Paul continues on to tell us, what does God the Father do? He honors the Son. And it says in verse 9 of Philippians 2, Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. Okay, so Paul, you're telling me, check my thinking. Think like Jesus. Jesus thinking gets him killed, but then he comes back to life. What do I do with this? I mean, how, how do we respond to this? This looks upside down to us, but Jesus is alive. And so the first thing is you've got to check your thinking. But here's the second thing, and this might be more important, is you've got to choose your response. Choose your response. See, in all that Jesus was willing to do, and that he was willing to leave the divine position of heaven, everything that he had created, everything he had a right to claim, he leaves that and comes to earth. And so what Jesus chose what God chose is love. 
And we see this beautifully in John 3.16. In John 3.16 it says, For this is how God loved. But see, who did he love? This is how God loved the world. This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. See, you and I have to choose our response. But God already made his choice, and his choice was to love. And in choosing to love, Jesus comes to this earth born of a virgin mother, grows up, lives, and eventually dies on the cross for you and I to pay for our sins. See, he didn't have to do that. The fact is, you and I really deserve to die for ourselves, to pay for our sins. And I don't think any of us can deny the fact that we all sin. Now, a lot of us like to say, well, oops, I made a mistake, I messed up. But when we willingly choose to hurt someone with our words, with our actions, that's sin. When we choose to not honor our parents and obey them, that's sin. See, we all sin. And sin is what separates us from God. And God is holy and perfect. And God in his perfection and holiness, holiness and sin don't mix. They don't go together. And so in order to bring God's creation, God created each and every one of us. We are made in the image of God, which Genesis 1 tells us. God loves his creation. And so Jesus is willing to do what looks upside down, enter into this world and die on the cross for you and I. And in doing so, what actually looks upside down to you and I turns things right side up because it gives us an opportunity to have that relationship that God created us to have. You see, that's a great story. But what are you going to do with it? You must choose your response. And see, Paul wrote in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, how we can respond to this. He says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. What are you saved from? You're saved from living this life separated from God. Being bound to sin, entangled by sin. Frustrated with patterns of your life that you can't seem to change. Living without purpose, living without meaning. But not just this life, it's on into eternity. Because if you live this life without Jesus, you're going to live eternity without him as well. And what that means is you will be separated from him forever. And for those who openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, what they're saved from is an eternity in hell. And so not only is it living this life with Jesus, in freedom from sin, it's living in eternity with him forever. But you've got to choose. And see, this is why, because there's going to come a day, this is what Paul was talking about the, at the end of the passage that we read in Philippians 2, verses 10 and 11. Whether you choose Jesus or not, verse 10 tells us that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, Jesus told his disciples the last time he saw them before he left, he said, I'm coming back. And for those who have claimed me, I'm coming back to get them and take them home. But when I return, what this verse is helping us understand out of Philippians 2, 10 and 11 is everyone will recognize Jesus. And for some, it will be the recognition that they made the wrong choice. So we've got to check our thinking. How are we looking at things? How are we seeing them? 
in what looks upside down. Maybe it's not as upside down as we thought. Because see, we look around and see today that everything is not what we think of as normal, not what we think of as the way we're used to. We walk in the grocery store and we see aisles that are empty. Walk down the aisle of the church and the pews are empty. Everything feels upside down. And none of us know when that's going to end. We wish we had that date and time. But see, that's why the story of Easter and what Jesus did and the fact that he was willing to leave heaven and come to earth gives us the opportunity to be hopeful in a time that is upside down. And see, there's only one person who can take a cross, which is a means of torture, a means of embarrassment, an opportunity of defeat, and turn it into victory. Jesus is the only one who could do that. And that's exactly what he did on Easter. Jesus is the one who takes the upside down and turns it right side up. But the question you have to answer is will you follow Jesus? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all that you were willing to do. And Jesus, that you did not hold on to position and everything you had a right to, but you were willing to sacrifice, you were willing to humble yourself, give it up, and come to this earth. Die on the cross for our sins. But not only did you die, you rose again. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, right now, if there's anyone who's watching this and they know that they don't have a relationship with you, Jesus, they don't know you. I pray that today would be the day that they would do what Paul said in Romans 10. They would openly declare, Jesus, that you are Lord and that you're raised from the dead. Today would be that day where they surrender and choose to follow Jesus. Because in Jesus, we find hope when things look absolutely upside down. So Jesus, please move in us to respond. And however we need to respond in these moments. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross. But not only did you die, you rose again. And all that we have to celebrate this Easter. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today as we're celebrating Easter, if you've made a decision, I want to encourage you right now. Share that with us. You can go online to our website, cbcmodesto.org forward slash decision and share that with us. And I want to thank you for joining us, but we want to continue to encourage you. We want to get to know you because of the hope we have in the upside down. So thank you for joining us this Easter. May God bless you.